speaking from the subject, don't lock yourself out. I didn't say knock yourself, I said lock. Amen? Don't lock yourself out. Amen. Uh, thank you, Ashes. There has been, or rather there is a lot of living between the womb and the tomb. A whole lot of living. Huh? If you're not in the tomb yet, there's still a lot of living. Huh? Amen. There's a lot of living between the womb and the tomb. Uh, that living can be done well or it can be done badly. Hmm? It can produce triumph or it can produce tragedy. And so we must be concerned about how we live. I'm reminded of the words to a song that a lot of young folks seem to be singing uh, about I'm living my best life now. Mm -hmm. Not really. <laughs> not, not really. Uh, because if you're, if you're not living for Christ, you're not living your best life. Amen? Your best life is in him because he is life. Uh, we know uh, this story uh, in the Bible as a story of two brothers, two twin brothers, if you please, Jacob and Esau, amen. They were the sons of Isaac and Rebekah. Uh, Isaac was the son of Abraham and Sarah. Mm -hmm. And so Rebecca was the daughter-in-law. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now the word of God tells us that these two brothers fought in the womb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jacob took hold of the heel of his brother mm -hmm. in the womb. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that Esau was born first, mm -hmm. then Jacob. Mm -hmm. And because Esau was the firstborn son, he received the birthright. Mm -hmm. Now, these two brothers had different personalities. Mm -hmm. They had two different approaches to God. That's one of the things that we have to recognize when children are born. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are so enamored uh, about whether it's a boy or a girl until we skip personality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they had two different personalities and two different approaches to God. And two different approaches to the things of God. Amen. Uh, there was a problem also of partiality in the house. I got to get out of here. Isaac favored Esau. Uh -huh. Rebecca favored Jacob. Mm -hmm. There was partiality in the house. And you got to be careful with partiality in the house because it can cause conflict in the house. Amen. And uh, it can uh, stir up some things hmm, that show up later on. You know, uh, a word to the wise. If you have more than one child, hmm, Whatever you do for one, do for the other. And then if you can't do for both of them, don't do for none of them. Hmm? That, that's just a word to the wise. Amen. You, you, you'll save yourself some heartache uh, and, and, and some other things down the road. Amen. So Esau here in the text uh, stands for the earthly man. Uh, he was the worldly man. Uh, 
he was red skinned, you know. Uh -huh. And and, 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 and and so he uh, was a man of the world. And because he was a man of the world, he despised his birthright and he despised the value of his birthright. Hmm? Jacob was a slickster. <laughs> but you can't be too hard on him because God let it be slick until God, God got tired of being slick. And then God reeled him in. Mm -hmm. uh, he had to wrestle with God. And so because of that, uh, Jacob was a man of faith, amen. And he valued spiritual things, two different personalities. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and uh, to the uh, church uh, uh, co-chair mm -hmm. of the trust people, <laughs> you have to find yourself in the message <laughs> because you went here. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. and, and, and so you'll find that in Hebrews 12, uh, 15 through 17. Now, God established the birthright, huh? Mm -hmm. God established it, not mom and daddy. Mm -hmm. God established the birthright, and the birthright was to go, y'all better pay attention this morning, mm -hmm. not to the oldest in the family, yeah. mm -hmm. but to the oldest son. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna leave you alone in here. Uh, okay. <laughs> to the oldest son. Did you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I, I didn't say the oldest person. I said the oldest son. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, that's who the birthright uh, was established for, amen, during the time of exodus of the children of Israel from the bondage of Egypt. That's when it was established, amen. The birthright consisted of the firstborn son receiving a double portion of the inheritance. Mm -hmm. and also receiving the privilege uh, of the priesthood. Mm -hmm. uh, the birthright contained spiritual blessings and material blessings. Mm -hmm. So now, if you're the oldest son and you're here this morning, I need you to check your blessing situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it contained spiritual and material blessings. Now, the one who had the birthright would be the first in line uh, that would lead to Jesus Christ. That's why he had access to the priesthood. Mm -hmm. uh, he had a responsibility, uh, and that responsibility would be uh, the first uh, that would lead to Christ, amen, and also to the possession of Canaan and to the fellowship of God. So I'm trying to tell you, the birthright carries some weight. Hmm? Now, uh, you'll find the passage of scripture uh, if you look on the, ex the page on Facebook. I don't have time this morning, I got to run. Today, in the body of Christ, we have many who do not want their birthright. Hmm? When asked to do anything for the Lord, they reply that they are not the pastor, mm -hmm. huh? Or they are not able, or better yet, get somebody else to do it. Mm -hmm. Because I do not like, nor do I want the responsibility of my birthright. Mm -hmm. Now, they have what's called an Esau spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He despised his birthright, and, and not only that, but uh, they're not interested in spiritual things. Mm -hmm. When you find a person that despises their birthright, they're not interested in spiritual things at all. They're more interested in the things of the world. They focus on the worldly things while trying to live a Christian life. Uh, let me put it this way. Uh, I go to, I, 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 as old folks who say, I adopt the door to church every once in a while. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's about all. But a true Christian is one uh, who the Holy Ghost can teach and guide. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's a true saying. Mm -hmm. Esau was not starving to death. Mm -hmm. 
Can I say it like I want to say it? Isaac and Rebecca had money. <laughs> they had things. Amen. So he wasn't starving to death. Amen. He sold his birthright for a bowl of stew. And uh, if you look at the Hebrew uh, version of this text, it says that he came in from the field and ran up to his brother Jacob and asked him if he could have some of that red pottage. And what he did when, when Jacob told him he could, the Hebrew text said he took it and just drunk it on down. <laughs> Despising his birth, breezy. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Uh, when he sat down, he ate his stew, and the Bible said, now this is how folks are doing you when they know you somebody, but you don't know you somebody. <laughs> the Bible said his brother not only gave him uh, some pottage, uh -huh. huh? But he gave him a piece of bread as well, huh? Did you see that? Yeah. That's how your enemy are doing you, see? I, I know you don't appreciate your birthright. I, I know you don't understand spiritual things. And, and, and not only that, but I, I, I know you want uh, some worldly things. So let me not only give you what you want, but let me put some ex extra along the side for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's how folks would do you, amen? So he sat down and he, and he surrendered his birthright because it meant nothing to him, amen? He sold the lasting benefits uh, for an immediate pleasure of food. You, do you not know that you can control folks with food? <laughs> this is the richest country in the world. Why is it that babies have to go without food? Please tell me. Well, this country throws away more food than the whole world can eat. Hmm? And then in other countries, they control their citizens by food. Huh? If you want to eat, you must do what I tell you to do. You must serve me if you want to eat. You can control folks with food. Amen? And so Jacob was wrong for what he did. He tricked his brother. Instead of waiting on God, God was going to give him the birthright, but he, he couldn't wait. Hmm? And so he stepped out of the will of God. Amen? And God dealt with him later on down the road. Amen? Because he, he was a slickster. His uncle slicked him. Yeah. Hmm? So the, the slipster got slipped by the slipper. Yeah. Amen? And so God promised to make a new testament of Israel and to put his law in their inward parts and in their heart. Amen? He said that Israel would be his people and that he would be uh, their God. Amen? Jacob in our text represents Israel. He represents the nation of Israel. He represents God's chosen people. Esau represents Edom. Amen. Yeah. The land of Edom was promised. Watch this right here. Because Esau was an Edomite, the land of Edom was promised by God not to receive any mercy from God. Yeah. And today, uh, you would be hard pressed to find where Edom actually is. Mm. That's how cursed it was. Mm. Uh -huh. huh? Edom uh, was promised by God not to receive any mercy from God because of Esau and the birthright situation. Amen? God promised that I'm going to make a new uh, testament with Israel, and I'm going to put my law on their inner parts and in their heart, and he said that Israel would be my people and that he would be their God. Amen? He promised that they would be his people and that he would forgive their iniquity and their sin he would remember no more. That's why the Jews are his chosen people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and let me run on and get out of your way here. Esau locked himself out of blessings forever. Mm -hmm. He locked himself out. Mm -hmm. Why? Because he uh, uh, was hungry uh, for some soup. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He got hungry for some stew. Mm -hmm. He sold his birthright, and so he locked himself out. He spent the remainder of his life making payments on the foolish decision that he made by selling his birthright. He spent his whole life trying to recover and never recover. Now, the question today is, what will you sell your birthright for today? Hmm? How greedy are you? And what in this world means enough to you to sell your birthright and get locked out? Hmm? Many are selling their convictions. Anything goes. I don't feel nothing. There are some people who don't have a conscience now. Their conscience hasn't been seared. 
Many people are selling their testimony. Huh? I, I used to go to church. I don't go to church no more. I don't go to nobody's church. Selling their testimony. Many people sell their church membership. So baby, did you ever go to you, are you saved? I used to go to Island and West Don't I don't go nowhere now. Yeah, you, you, you sell your membership. Many people uh, sell their service to God. I used to sing in that choir. But I got out of that old choir. Huh? I, I, oh yeah, I used to usher. Huh? I got off that old usher board. Huh? They, they sold their service. Hmm? Uh, the service to God. And then many people sell their praise. Come on, talk to me in here. I'm going to be out of the way in a minute. Let me tell you something. You, 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 you sit up in church and the Holy Spirit is falling in the, in, in the house. Huh? And, and the Holy Spirit is running to and fro in the house. And you sit up. You, you, you sit up breathing the Holy Ghost. So you sell your praise. Huh? Uh, 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 uh. And then not only that, but you can also sell your worship. When you're MIA and you stay MIA, uh, you sell your worship. Hmm? Now, uh, not only that, uh, you, you sell all of that for the, the pottage of the world. And then you don't get no bread. <laughs> and not only that, but you get locked out. And, and, and here's what a lot of people don't understand. When you put the church down, you, you, you're locking yourself out. You're locking yourself out of the blessings of God. You're locking yourself out of the fellowship of God. Amen. It's not about the people. It's all right that the people are here, but the whole reason that you're here is you're here because you, you want to be in fellowship with the Lord. You, you want to praise Him. Amen. You want to worship Him. Amen? You want to thank Him for all of His many blessings that He has bestowed upon you. But as a, 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 instead of doing that, we sell our praise and we sell our worship. Uh, for the world. Amen. Uh, I, I, I can tell you that I've been around a little while and I, I realize that some people uh, will, uh, if I ask you, uh, I, listen, I need you to be at my house Sunday morning at 1130. Uh, uh, We're going to kick it off. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. To a lot of people, they don't even give it a second thought. I tell you what you said. What time you say you want me to be? I want you to be at 11. I'm going to be there at 11 o'clock. Uh -huh. hmm? Don't even think about it's the Lord's day. Mm -hmm. The Lord's been good to me. I'm going to show up and tell him thank you. I'm going to show up and praise his holy man. <laughs> Instead, I, I got to be at somebody else's house at 11 30. And 11 30 is a little early in the morning to turn it up. <laughs> I got to get out of here. <laughs> but a whole lot of people, they'll be at your house at 11.30. Yeah. And uh, I, I want to be on time because I don't want to miss nothing. I, I want to be able to, 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 to enjoy everything. <laughs> don't y'all get started until I get there. I'm going to leave you alone here. <laughs> and so they're locked out because they despise their birthright. <laughs> they're locked out because they despise their fellowship time with the Lord. And then not only that, but they choose the pottage of this world. When we choose the pottage of this world and we neglect our birthright, we forfeit uh, the benefits of Jesus' death, burial, and his resurrection. You know, when, he, uh, when the Bible said that, uh, that, that, that when Jesus here, when he died, he didn't die because he needed to die. <laughs> he died in your place and in my place. And the reason he died is because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is, 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 is eternal life. And then, so that's why he died. And then the scripture said that he was buried. Well, he was not buried because he needed to die and be buried. <laughs> he, he, he died and he was buried because of my sins and your sin. And then not only that, but he did not stay dead because the Bible said earlier on the third day. Do you know 
we got up with all power. And so what you forfeit is you forfeit the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, which is your birthright. I got to get out of here. And then, not only that, but I'm trying to get out of your way here. We forfeit God's written word. Do you hear me, somebody? I'm amazed at how many people go to church, but they do not know God's word. And then, not only that, but they will not come on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock to study God's word. And not only that, but we forfeit eternal riches. And then, we forfeit the, the truth that is in God's word. We forfeit a whole lot of things. And so we get locked out of God's rich blessings. And then, not only that, but we forfeit the benefit of the gospel preaching. There are a whole lot of people, they come to church. I got to get out of here. And all I want to do is, I want to hear your choir sing. I heard that you got a good choir. And I just came to hear the choir sing. Well, the last time I checked, the choir can't get you in heaven. All the choir can do is try to massage your low down cold heart. And so that the Lord can get his way inside your heart. And then another thing, I just came back because I heard that y'all got some good musicians. And so I came this morning because I wanted to hear the musician tickle the keys. I got to get out of here, but I somebody tell you that the music won't get you into heaven. And so we forfeit the gospel preaching. And then not only that, but another thing that we forfeit, we forfeit going to Mount Zion. You don't hear me yet, do you? Mount Zion is another name for heaven. They used to say a song when I was a little boy coming up in the church. I'm bound for Mount Zion way out on the hill. If anybody don't make it, surely I will. I got to leave you alone here. But you forfeit going to Mount Zion. Mount Zion is the heavenly city. Mount Zion is the place where God dwells. I got to get out of here. Don't blame God if you lock yourself out. Don't blame the world if you get yourself locked out. Don't blame bad luck if you get yourself locked out. If you get locked out, there's only one thing that you have to do. I'm going to leave you alone here. But I heard a story about a man that had a jewelry store. And the man was a rich man. And all of a sudden, one day, he was going out to lunch. And he went out to lunch, opened the door, and went out the door. And the door closed behind him. And he tried to get back in. But he realized that he had locked himself out. I got to leave you alone here. The policeman came by and saw the man fumbling and fidgeting with the lock. He asked. He asked the man, what is the problem? The man said, I locked myself out. The policeman said to him, the same thing that I'm trying to say to you today. If you get locked out, if you lock yourself out, there's only one thing that you can do to get back in. you got to go and get another key, get another key made. i got to keep you alone here. Don't just go anywhere and try to get a key to unlock the lock that you locked yourself out on. I got a set of keys here. And these set of keys won't get you in when you lock yourself out. This little key here is too little. It won't get you in. And then I got a bigger key here. But this key here it won't get you in if you lock yourself out. And then I got another big key here. And I can push the button Maybe you'll get in. I just stopped by to tell him that if you lock yourself out, the only way that you can get yourself in is you need another key. And I stopped by to tell you because I don't want you 
running around to Ace Hardware. I got to get out of the way here. I don't want you running around to Lowe's. And then I don't want you running around to do it yourself. I stop by to tell you there's only one place where you can get the right key. You've got to go back to Jesus, Mary's baby. And Jesus is the only key that you will need if you get locked out or if you lock yourself out. If you go back, go back to Jesus. I heard Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except by me. And it's because of Jesus' work out on a hill called Calvary. It was because of his obedience to God the Father that, 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 that Jesus has the key. Jesus has the key to unlock destructive forces. When you're catching hell in your life, Jesus got the key. He can lock up some things in your life to keep them from hurting you. And then Jesus has a key. And his key is the only key that can lock Satan in hell. And he can't get out. I got to get out of here. But Jesus, he is the key. And so you're going to need a key mate. If you lock yourself out, don't go around trying every door and trying to get in when you can't get in. All you got to do is turn around. And that word turn around means I got to repent. I got to turn from and then turn to. And then I can get a key to get in. You remember the apostle Peter, don't you? When Jesus called Peter to himself, come here, Peter. I got something to give you. I got a set of keys that I want to give you. But he didn't give Peter the master key. Get out of here. He kept the master key for himself. He told Peter, you take the keys. And I heard somebody say, when I get to heaven, I'm going to run around and try to find St. Peter. I'm going to leave Oh, yeah. But I somebody tell you that St. Peter won't be able to get you in. You go to the North Gate. I'm looking for Peter. Is Peter in here? You won't get an answer. And then somebody else said, I know he must be here because God gave him the key. And so they'll go to the West End and start knocking. I'm looking for Peter because Peter got the keys. And somebody will tell you that Peter can't get you in the gate. And then somebody else will go way down south. I got to travel way down south. I got to go to the South Gate. Knock on the door. Hello. I'm looking for Peter. Oh, Peter got some keys. I read in the Bible that the Lord gave Peter some keys. So I'm looking for Peter because I want to get in. You know Peter, don't you? Oh, that's right. St. Peter. Well, you won't hear a word. St. Peter. And Peter, not here. And he can't get you in. And then somebody else said, well, there's only one other gate. And he must be at that gate. So I'm going to the East Gate. Looking for Peter. Because it said Peter had the keys to the kingdom. Asked the question, is anybody here? Do you know where I can find Peter? I want to get in. They said Peter had the keys. Well, Peter has some keys. But he does not have the master the key. Right. The only somebody right. that has the master key yeah. is the master. Yeah. And he did not make any duplicate copies. Yeah. I got to get out of here. Yeah. Now I'm trying to tell you yeah. as I get ready to take my seat. Don't lock yourself out. Don't get locked out by default. Don't get locked out because you're old. Blow out ways. Don't get locked out because of your pride. Yeah. Don't get locked out because of a hard heart. All right. huh? See, you can get locked out. Yeah. Huh? Esau got locked out. Yeah. Huh? Give me some of that red pottage. Mm. Huh? 
And Jacob said, give me your birthright. Yeah. Here. I don't need that old thing no how. Yeah. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Folk do, this, do their church membership the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long you been a member down there? Child, I've been a member down there for years. What do you do to nothing? <laughs> hmm? Your membership ain't worth a quarter. Ain't worth a, ain't, ain't worth a quarter. You hear me? You cannot get in the kingdom by trying to associate yourself with the church. Uh -huh. You got to get in it. Yeah. Huh? And there's only one way you can get in the church. I need somebody to hear me this morning. It's not only one way. You got to be born in it. Yes. That's what being born again is all about. You know, talking about, you know, I was born in City Hospital. Yeah. Well, when was you born again? Because right. yeah. <laughs> that's the one that counts. Mm -hmm. You scurrying around looking for your birth certificate. Uh, yeah. This is what I want to know. I want to know, are you in the Lamb's Book of Life? Yeah. I want to know, are you in the lamb skin book of life? That, that, that's where your name ought to be. Yeah. See, the ink on your birth certificate, it'll fade away. Yeah. But if your name is in this book, yeah. it's eternal. Okay. Huh? God bless you. The door of the church is open for the reception. Don't, now, remember, don't lock yourself out now. Yeah. 